may look like we're, we're living in a free market right now, and you have people that are look like champions of the free market and talk about capitalism, but really they are all beneficiaries of a system where we socialize the cost of capital. Now, how do we fix this? So in order to remedy this unfair advantage created by a federal law that legally grants these anomalous investment firms the right to bundle, storing, moving, and investing our property you know, all in one particular function is by simply having the treasury modernize its function. Bank risk or systemic risk is created from all of us supplying property to these investment firms and they're not using that property wisely. And so we end up sapping a lot of value from the economy and then the goods and services that we thought would be in the economy are no longer there. And so then the cash, there's too much cash and then the Federal Reserve has to step in to, to, to reduce the supply. Okay, that's inflation. So I'm saying by simply modernizing the function of the treasury, right, we can actually, con instead of being powerless convest uh, investors, powerless investors, we are going to convert banks to being simple investment firms. Investment firms that specialize in making investments, let's say by providing loans for mortgages, you know, or small businesses or that kind of thing, those are all very useful to the growth of an economy. We're gonna modernize you by saying, okay, Treasury, instead of forcing us into a scenario where we have to invest with other individuals simply because they store and move our money, I want you to, I want you to store and move my money for me or help me store my money, in other words, protect it, and then I want you to help me move it between other individuals because in order for an economy to exist, an economy will exist solely on trade, not investment. We rely on investment to grow an economy, right? But the, the, the existence of an economy itself is dependent upon the concept of trade. So we say, uh, instead of making me use my uh, account with Wells Fargo or Bank of America where I'm logging on my phone and you know using my online account, I want you to provide me with an interest-free online account. So, interest-free online account directly with the Treasury. And I want you to give me the function to actually pay people such as Tyrone when I'm doing business. So we all have interest-free online accounts and whenever I want to reassign ownership of my property over to him, I simply have to put his name next to a number that belongs to me and now it's gonna belong to him, right? Because that's what I'm doing when I'm handing somebody a piece of paper with a number on it, right? I'm literally switching who owns that amount of value or money and that's it. The Treasury is now going to help me store my money and I'm going to be able to access it from an interest-free online account. I'm also going to be able to pay other people when I wish to engage in the process of trade, which is what an economy depends upon. And then, in order for investment to actually work, and investment is something that we depend on in order for the growth of an economy, we are going to have the Treasury automate this simple, very simple concept of the cash accounting function. And if you look at a cash flow statement, all it's looking at is the amount of cash coming in minus the amount of cash that's going out. And really, that just tells an accountant, you know, tells us, you know, how liquid you are, right? How much activity you are engaged in right now. I can honestly say that just by automating the cash accounting function for everyone who wishes to be able to uh, depend on it will save them so much in terms of resources because hiring an accountant can cost hundreds, even thousands of dollars. And for a small business owner, that's an incredibly important function to have and this is why, this is a very essential reason why. If you do not account for your financial performance when you are engaging in commerce, then you might as well consider yourself completely absent from the economy because there's no way the rest of us who are interested in investing anywhere can possibly identify you. The only way that you're going to attract investment from the public is if you clearly and have verifiably demonstrated that you can earn more than you can spend. And if you're not doing your accounting, you're not gonna get anything. And that's what we need, That's that's in terms of information, that's what we need in order to make investment work and actually grow the economy and to create jobs and to get taxes moving, right? We need to be able to first identify demand and meet it. And the most important demand when it comes to the free market is the demand for capital. 
I'll give you a visual. All this looks like is the treasury sticks some software in a computer, hosts it, makes it available to us in the form of our Blackberries and our iPhones, where I can take my, and then once we have access and that software is up and running, I walk over to my investment firm, right? My investment firm, I say, give me my, give me my cash, give me my property, I don't want to invest in you guys anymore. You guys are terrible. I'm gonna walk over to the post office and I'm gonna say, hi, because po the post office needs something new to do. And we're gonna say, I want you to uh, c take this cash and I want you to convert it to my interest-free online account, right? That way, whenever I'm actually using it with other people, we can actually just avoid the paper altogether. But the nice thing is, is that in supplying us this access to this particular software, the cash accounting function is automated, so if I am a small business person, I can choose to publish my financial performance. Yeah, you can choose to publish your financial performance online in the same way that you like to talk about your favorite sandwich on Yelp, you know, or your Facebook, you want to talk about a movie on Facebook. The most important information in an economy is financial information. So you ought to be able to publish in real time how well your business is doing. And if you're doing well, then you're likely to invite competition, which benefits consumers, or you're going to actually invite us as investors to want to come in and invest in you, right? That's how you attract capital, is by giving people the opportunity to identify that you're performing well, right? So people are actually taking their money out of these investment firms and now sticking it in areas where they know for sure because the treasury is actually making this information available to us and because you want us to know we are putting capital in places where it actually literally helps the economy grow this is this is where we go from systematizing risk to simply individualizing it yeah and in the process the nice thing about offering a central accounting service directly from the treasury is that we can also automate our promises. You can actually define future economic events that if they get fulfilled, or if they happen, that we fulfill our promises. And a tax is a promise. So if Tyrone is running his business and he earns revenue daily, he can actually define that every time he earns revenue that he says, I want to pay this tax, or I will pay my tax, right? And so let's say it's uh, the state of California, and uh, you know, the state of California state tax right now is eight and three quarters. He can make it so that whenever he earns revenue, immediately eight and three quarters percent ends up in the account of the, of the state. And the beautiful thing about that is, is that no one is really having to rely on anyone to help them to get their taxes paid or have the taxes moved immediately. And then of course the most beautiful thing about that is because we're all participating in a central accounting system or using central accounting software, we can all clearly see how much tax revenue is being sent up to the state from any one part of the state. And we can also clearly see what they are doing with that money. So by viewing the amount of resources that are being sent to the state and also what's being done with those resources, even at the federal level, we can now finally hold the people who we elect to govern us accountable, right? No one can claim that something is gonna work and not have it ultimately proven because that's the big situation right now is people love to get up there and make promises and there's no real way to actually see whether that promise is fulfilled because of the efforts that they've made. We are all exploited for what we don't know and what we can't prove and so by actually using a central accounting system are we able to hold people accountable for the decisions that they make, not only on an individual level, but also at a public level? And when people make useful decisions at the public level, what do we want, what do we want for them? We want them to go even higher because they're doing a great job. Good job, all right, we like this individual. And if you're doing a terrible job, then we can say, get out of here, you're doing a terrible job. Yes. Yes, yes, but I want, yes. But remember, I, I say this to everybody, that an economy ultimately is a public entity. And the reason why is because we all individually contribute to its existence. Therefore, you know, as a result, we all, we all deserve, we all are required to understand our economy, the one that we contribute to. So if you're gonna go and you know, engage in some sort of purchase, you're gonna buy that bottle of water, 
you know, for a dollar at the local liquor store, we don't have to know that you have purchased a bottle of water. But we do deserve to know that the liquor store business in downtown Los Angeles has just earned an additional dollar of revenue, which is economic activity. Because your actions are affecting the economy which we all participate in. And so by accounting for how you affect an economy, can we then make clear decisions and, and informed decisions about what to do in that economy at the next step? And that's where I'm getting back to the basic definition of economics. Economics does not involve Marxism or communism or liberal or conservative or Keynesian or Aust Austrian. All that is garbage. Economics involves the study of scarce resources and studying how they're allocated and that involves measuring how much and how far it went and then what was traded in return so that we can actually make informed decisions about how to do that in the future.